Hi, welcome to Wandering Into the Woods, a podcast brought to you by the creators of Adventures with BG. I'm Linda. And this is Jarrett. And today we are going to tell you about a day trip that Jarrett took um, while he was out in Riyadh. So this specific day trip that Jarrett took, um, I understand Jarrett, and correct me here where I might be wrong, but you visited Diria, Wadi Namar, Wadi Hanifa, and Het Cave. That's correct. Okay. And were these the only places that you went to, or did you try going to others? Was there a plan? How did how did these places ended up being um, on your day trip list? Um, there was other places. Uh, these were the only ones that were open or are just parks so that there's no one controlling entrance to them. So that's how we ended up going there. And so, these ones we'll talk about the ones that were actually visited. So the four of them are free? Um, I don't think Dira, Dira, Diria is mm-hmm. going to be free in the future, Uh huh. Um, but all the other ones were. Okay. So yeah, you know, for our listeners, we're not sure on the pronunciations. We've looked up a few and we hear different ones. So we're just going to go with our, um, our best guess. And I'm sorry if we do offend anybody. If you do know the right recommendation, please feel free to Give us a shout out and uh, let us give us any tips that you could give us for the pronunciation. Um, and going back to the state trip, Jared. Um, so, I, so you first go to Diria. Yeah, we what, started the day going to Diria. What is Diria? Um, so Diria is like an old fort. Um, it's known as kind of old Riyadh. Um, it's part of the uh, the Saudi Arabia's 2030 plan. They turned it into like this big resort town. In this area where you can go see, it kind of reminds me of some of the places we went in Spain, in southern Spain. Oh, interesting. And Granada. Yeah, so it's just like big walled off area um, and fortresses, and it's going to have a ton of museums. We we went in. Um, the entrance was open. But- oh, hold on. Because you alluded to this being old Riyadh and to it looking like um, places in southern Spain where we know there was a lot of Moorish um, influence. uh uh-huh. Um, so Diria, I understand. So it was a capital at some point. I don't think it was a capital. Um, I mean, things were much more fractured back then, Uh, but I don't think it was ever the capital of Saudi Arabia. I mean, Saudi Arabia is a fairly modern state in and of itself. So, right. And I'm not saying it was the capital of Saudi Arabia, just that, you know, I'm just wondering what. Usually where there's buildings like that, it, it means that it was a capital or a center, important center of some sort. No, it's just like an old fort. Uh, the walls around it, I mean, some of them are original, but some of them are new just to create this complex that's going to, you know, to wall it off from the public. So you have to go into a main entrance and stuff like that. Okay. Um, well, according, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be controversial, Jared. I'm mm-hmm. just going to the Saudi, uh, welcome to Saudi Arabia website. Okay. And they're the ones that say that um, this city, as of 1745, was the country's capital. Okay. Um, so that it laid, and but I think you're right too, because they also are very careful and say it laid out the foundations for what would later become a unified Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So, it, it, but all this to say, like it was an important center, right? So that's why At you have point. you had those. Um, those walls, those buildings that, that you're describing? I think a lot of the outside walls were a modern creation. Really? Yes. So that it could be controlled and it can be more like a, a, I mean, a site. So people can't just run in and look at everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Most like there is the fort itself and the old town, but a lot of that is walled within this location. Okay. I see. And so it, I don't think it's open to the public. I mean, there's not a lot of good information. I just know that it's part of the 2030 plan. And when we drove through, there is tons of tons of construction where they're building new houses and resorts and shops and things for people to go to. Okay. All right. So um, we can't guarantee that it will be open to visitors um, anytime soon. Yeah. So this, I mean, the Saudis got a lot of information on their like tourism page, but it does not give you hours or prices or things like that. It's generally like half the information you need to make a decision. Okay. And so that's why we ended up at Diria and it was, I mean, it was open, but it was not open for business. I see. Yeah. So we just took uh, a couple of pictures of the the fortress or the the old center itself. And that's where we ended our time there and, and headed back into Riyadh proper. 
Okay, so it was just you, you got you had the opportunity to see these structures, both ancient and modern, but you didn't have much context. No, yeah, it'll be a big museum, I'm sure, at some point when when things are completely set up. That does look like it'll, according to the web, I'm, from what I'm seeing on the website, it looks like it. Just seeing those sites was amazing in and of yeah, itself. It's it's going to be really a neat place, and it's you know kind of disappointing that it wasn't in full operation. But hey, you got the opportunity to see it. Yeah. So, um. After Diria, y'all headed out to Wadi Namor? Yes, back in town. Um, it's a park. Wadi is Arabic for creek or river. They don't really have rivers. Um, so it's kind of either a creek or an intermittent creek. You know, you still call dry like creek beds wadis okay. in Arabic. So it could be drier with water. So it's kind of their creek bed with or without water kind of term. All encompassing for things that flow for, you know, rivers, creeks, streams, things like that. So Wadi Namar is a park or a location or wait, is it Wadi Namar Park? So Wadi Namar is the creek Uh itself. And then there is a Wadi Namar. There's probably multiple parks, but this one is the waterfall park Oh, specifically. So they've got a fake waterfall that they run. It's not real? It's not real. Oh, I thought it was real. Uh, No, 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 no. No, not at all. I mean, it's real in that water falls down. (laughs) So, I mean, that's real. That Um, counts. Yeah, so we went up on top of the waterfall itself. Didn't have enough water in it. Um, it was probably April, so it did, it was getting warm. There wasn't a lot of water, and it was not flowing over. Uh huh. So we were up, we didn't we didn't go to the lowlands. We went up on the high side, which would have been disappointed had the waterfall been running. Right. But since it wasn't running, it was I guess cool to be able to look up and see on the walkways and in the water and see you know what little wildlife they had there. Um, but yeah, so we got out. Um, it's this huge cliff face where they pump water over it. We kind of looked around the pond, and that's how I know that it happens to be fake is because we were up on the waterfall itself. <laughs> uh, so hard, sorry to, to burst that. But it's still a beautiful sight if you're on the other side and it's running. So there's pictures on Google where you can see where it looks when it's optimal. I'm going to tell myself that it is real, and these artificial installations you saw are just helping I mean, maintain the, the real the cliff. The cliff itself isn't artificial it looks like it's it's an actual piece of the environment it's just they built water like a water pond up on top of it and pump water in there so it fills up and flows over constantly okay so it's half fake i guess but yeah there's benches it it looks like a great place to walk i mean you know you've got to go in the cool season because doing things outside can can get real hot real quick in april what was the weather like um it was getting into the 90s i want to say when we were out in the day in the morning uh, this was like mid afternoon because because okay. D- Duraya Duraya is kind of you know it's outside of Riyadh it's old Riyadh but it's not like in the center like you would think like mm-hmm. old town would be so it's kind of to the northwest of town so we had to come back in so it's mid morning by now okay and then you headed out to Wadi Hanifa yeah not too much further it's all in town I think they meet up at some point but I don't I couldn't be quoted on the geographical you know co-mingling of bodies and, and Riyadh so and it's a park too right yeah this is a par- this one has more parks I believe but this one we went to um it's actually had quite a bit of running water in it uh-huh um and they have these big pools and you can look at it in google maps so they have like these square rectangles and it's like space art Ooh. yeah so they have all these like fake islands of concrete um so it's, it's a neat area if you wanted to go and spend the day out there it's got I don't know. Uh, Wadi Namar didn't really have running water. It looked pretty, you know, stagnant. It flowed a little bit, obviously, but uh-huh. it wasn't a lot of running water. Um, this place actually, Wadi Hanifa actually had running water. So that was nice to see. I hadn't seen running water at it besides like a sink, shower, or toilet in a long time. So it I was mean, cool. I'm not asking you to reveal all the secrets of the wadis there, but was do you think these were real or fake or artificial? Um. I mean, they are real wadis. I wouldn't be surprised if they're not assisted. Yeah. You know how the river walk is assisted? Yes. Yeah. So I think it's probably something like that. So when they flow on their own, they just let them flow on their own. Uh Uh-huh. But I'm sure they have a safety point where they're like, oh, we got to pump water. And so this thing looks cool. Okay. Is my guess. I don't know, but I feel pretty confident in saying that's probably what they do. So is it kind of like the San Antonio River Walk where you can't, like, you can only look, you can't really... Go I mean, in there? no, this is Wild West. I mean, you could you could get in that water if you wanted to. I can't imagine that people do or 
I, I don't know that swimming is a big thing there because uh-huh. the desert doesn't have a whole lot of water. I mean, there's swimming pools and rich people love swimming pools, but mm-hmm. your general population, I, I feel like they probably aren't a lot of swimmers. So I don't think they would go in the water in general. But I, So there weren't people in the water when you went? No, not at all. Okay. No, there was like hardly any people there in the day. It's probably at that point, it's getting hot. And I'm sure that's more of an evening or morning thing if they're going to go there. Probably evening thing, knowing them. Okay. Um, but yeah, they, they had nice little islands. Um, it looks pretty cool from above. And I mean, just looking at itself, it, it was nice not having seen flowing water in a long time. Yeah. And um, so that you're already, this is the afternoon, and then you head out to Het Cave? Yes. Um, so Het Cave is in the village of Het, H-E-E-T. Uh, it's probably the coolest location we went to. Why is that? Um, it just looks really neat. Um, it's hard to describe it by calling it a cave, which I don't know is, you, you know, I'm not a... Okay, okay. you're going to have to walk me through it. I'm not a I, geologist. I've so. never been. Yeah. And frankly, I have not Googled this place either. So I have no idea what this looks like. I mean, I showed you a picture from when I went there. So you have seen it. Okay. But still, you know, I don't remember that <laughs> off the top of my head for one. Yeah. But two, you know, for our listeners, walk us through, you know, as best as you can... What is this experience like? What, what do you? How would you describe it to us? So it's it's uh, about an hour outside of Riyadh itself. You go to this small village, and it's on the outskirt of this little village. You get on this dirt road. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some compounds um, that you go by, and as those kind of peter out, you get on this. I mean, you're already on a dirt road, but it, it and you kind of go into this more cliff face area. It's all part of this giant escarpment we talked about in the last episode. Okay, like it all seems connected. Pretty sure. Um, so you go to like the edge of that and you park by this little building. I've seen pictures apparently, and people were in there. So I guess you hang out in there after you hang out in the cave and you have snacks or dinner or or whatever the meal is. Okay. Um, whether you go before or after, I don't know what's most commonplace, but people are in there and we were coming out. All right. So you walk up, um, and mostly all you see is big cliff face. And as you start to get closer, you kind of see this opening and as you're approaching it are you is it a steep going up are you going downhill so nothing so right now it's flat flat. okay it's flat as you're walking to the cave opening okay and then um you'll get up pretty close to it you may go down a little bit at this point Mm -hmm. and then it's very steep so it's like shell rock gravelly Uh Um, so it can be pretty rough to get down and it's three to five hundred feet down i would say Mm -hmm. where you just kind of yeah. Switch back over all this rough terrain. Okay. Um, and then once you're in there, it's kind of a cave. I mean, it's more of a giant overhang. Okay. Um, if you're, you know, from the Austin area, like I'm sure you've seen an overhang in the limestone where it's right. kind of carved out and it's just kind of like a roof, but it's not a full cave. Right. So right. it's kind of like that, but like on steroids and giant. Okay. And so you go down 300 feet and there's water and allegedly the water, you know, there's caves down in there in the water, but... Like there, right. there's just, just one big chamber and that's Het Cave itself. So there's some large rocks sticking out that you can walk on. Um, a lot of people go in and swim. We didn't. Um, I don't know how clean it is and stuff, but it didn't stop a lot of people from swimming around in there. Okay. Um, and Did you see families or was it just men that were swimming out there? Um, I mean, we went out there. A group of just men were finishing up. Okay. And then um, there was a group of tourists that were showing up. Um, okay. and they were all women, I believe. Okay. And there may have been a mixed group as well coming down behind us. So, I mean, out of the group that I was with, I was the one that wanted to look, to, look around. I don't think that the other two with me even went all the way down into the cave. So, I spent a few more minutes, but I didn't get as much time there as I would have wanted. I see. Yeah. So, I, I went to both edges and, you know, took some pictures and looked in the big cracks in the rocks down into the water. So, allegedly, there's a bunch of caves down inside the water, but... And the water itself is something like 20 feet deep, oh, at least wow. just from that main pool. I don't know. You, you know, there's not a whole lot of information right, on it. And that's just my guesstimation from what I could see down myself. Is there a uh, wild, did you get a chance to see any wildlife there? No. Okay. I mean, it's just, it's just desert. I, okay. I don't know if, you know, bird, well, I mean, there were some birds, I guess, okay. you know, in the area. So I don't know if birds come around. I'm sure like lizards and insects and things use the cave at night, but I don't know that they have a whole lot of like a larger game in Saudi Arabia itself. So, Right. Yeah. I was just wondering maybe, I, I wonder if the water itself has any life in there, in uh, it. 
I wouldn't think so. I mean, from what I hear, they trash. The, I mean, so Saudi doesn't pick up their trash a lot. Okay. They hire people to do it, but like picking up trash is just not a thing that they do. So they leave it everywhere. So I imagine it's full of trash and stuff. So oh, if there's stuff in there, it's rough. But yeah, I can't imagine there is anything too natural living in there. But I, I don't know. Maybe there are. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so I, after that, y'all just headed back home or um, for the evening? Just had some dinner, but that was th- those were the main attractions for the for that day that were actually open. Well, it sounds like quite a day. Yeah, it was. You got to walk a lot. Yep. Especially you, if you were going into those um, more, um, what do you call them? The the you were really venturing into the edges of the places you were visiting. Yeah. Like uh, I'm trying to think of the term, but you were you were really going above and beyond. Sure. <laughs> Hiking a little bit more than your um, friends. Yeah. A little bit. Jared, thank you so much for telling us your story of your day trip out in uh, Riyadh. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jared, for telling us about your day trip out in Riyadh. Mm-hmm. If you like to listen to this account and you would like to listen to our other adventures that we've been on for the last two years, you can listen to our podcast, um, Wandering Into the Woods, on any of the apps that you can listen to on podcasts. And you can also find us on social media at Adventures with BG on Instagram and Adventures with BG on Facebook. And those are the letters B and G. If you like the show, uh, make sure you go to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. It really helps with our growth and promotion, and we'd really appreciate it. And as always, stay safe as you wander into the woods.